Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for another restful episode of True Scary Stories to Help You Fall Asleep. Today, we're going to be reading True Camping Horror Stories. I hope you enjoy them. So without further ado, lay back, relax, and enjoy these true scary stories. My boyfriend went camping with friends once before we met. His friends went to bed one by one, and he was the last one at the fire, waiting for it to die down while he finished a beer. Said he got the distinct feeling that someone was watching him, and he's an avid camper, so he said it really struck him as odd that he was feeling nervous. Anyway, it was enough to make him put out the fire and go to sleep in his car with the doors locked. So he falls asleep in the middle of the night, hears a big noise that wakes him up. He wasn't sure what it was because he had been sleeping and doesn't hear anything else. He thought that maybe he dreamt it, but it's still pitch black out, so he stays in the car and goes back to sleep. The next morning he wakes up, and the first thing he sees is a big handprint on his passenger side window, like someone had smacked the glass. His friends swear it wasn't them, and I believe them. They're not the type to prank each other like that. Still freaks me out. And I think about it sometimes, when I camp now. I went solo backpacking near Skinwalker Ranch and nearly got abducted by aliens. I woke up in the middle of the night to a beam of light directly over my tent. I thought someone might be standing over my tent with a headlamp on, but there was no sound and no response to my hellos. I finally got the courage to open the window, but nobody was there, but the light was still shining down in a perfect beam. So I got my knife and bear spray and was ready to give E.T. the good old welcome to Earth. When I got out of the tent and looked up, it was the moon. The full moon had come out from behind the mountains, under the cover of the clouds, and the clouds had finally parted. But it definitely scared the heck out of me. I was sitting by my fire on a solo trip one night, sipping a little too much whiskey. I keep hearing leaves crinkle behind me, I convince myself that it's just the fire, for a bit, until it gets close enough that I know darn well that it's something trying to eat me. I set my flask down, hatchet in one hand, flashlight in the other, and I stand up and turn as quickly and gracefully as I can. My light lands on the hideous monster that wanted to eat me, only it's no monster, just a deer. Admittedly, he was quite close. The deer immediately turns and runs off towards his two friends, who I am convinced were laughing. I assume that they were playing the classic reindeer game of who can get the closest to the human without getting caught. I also had a similar story where I was backcountry camping by myself. I had just settled in my tent and turned off my lantern when I realized there was a light show going on outside all around my tent. It was glowing and the lights were flickering all over the place. It wasn't the moon, more like a lightning show without lightning or a disco. I had no clue what was going on outside, either aliens or a forest poltergeist. I was scared but I opened the zipper a bit and peeked out, and it was fireflies. The whole clearing where I was camping was lit up full of fireflies. I've never seen so many, and it was quite pretty. I just never noticed them until I turned my lantern off.
I was camping in the Linville Gorge for the first time and was down a dead-end trail beside the river. I was in my hammock with a bug net and tarp. About 1.30 in the morning, my entire hammock lit up brighter than the sun for about three or four seconds, but it felt like forever. I was sure that I was going to get abducted by aliens. Then it stopped, and I never heard anything. I was too scared to look outside, so I just stayed still and eventually went back to sleep. Last year, my family and I went camping in Little Nakus here in Washington. It was during that really bad fire up by Bumping Lake. Anyways, one day during the dead of night, my girlfriend and I start hearing a loud clanking noise, as if someone was slamming very thick sticks against trees. We hear it repeatedly in one direction for a while, maybe intervals of ten at a time. Then it goes quiet for a few minutes. Then we would hear it in another direction outside of the camp, once even coming from the direction of a smallish hill that we were camping next to. It kept coming from different directions all night. It always sounded as if the noise was coming from about 25 yards outside of the camp, give or take. We ended up falling asleep, and the next day everybody said that they were hearing it as well. A family friend even left his tent that night to investigate, but couldn't find anything or hear anyone. He thought he was just tripping out, because it was his first time camping. Anyways, the noises were of course accompanied by twigs snapping on the ground. We couldn't find any animal footprints the next day. No scratches on trees from an antler or bear claws. Just my grandmother telling us that my little brother actually started sleepwalking towards one corner of the tent, to which he explained that he thought that my grandma was outside of the tent calling him in his dream. My grandmother found a small pennant of an angel outside her tent that next morning. Could have been something random that an earlier camper had dropped but it just made the story that much more weird. I was on a four day canoe trip down a river in Victoria, Australia. And on the third night, we set up camp in a camping area that is really only accessible by water. While searching for firewood, one girl and I smell something terrible, definitely something large and dead. We keep going down a little game trail and found a mound of branches and sticks. The smell is also strong now, so strong that we didn't even know the direction it's coming from. I kind of peer into this mysterious mound, and we push the few top branches off, giving ourselves the creep, imagining as if this is where the smell's from. We uncover nothing and make our way back to camp and tell the other girls that we assume there is a dead kangaroo up further. That night we toast marshmallows and head to our tents late. A few hours later, I'm awoken by weird coughing sounds and heavy, fast running through our camp between our tents. It's so frantic, but so purposeful. Now, the smell of earlier is definitely a murdered canoeer. And we are next because we have stumbled into this psycho's territory and we don't even know how to leave other than by water. I figure I'd rather die first than be chased through the brush, wondering if my friends are alive. So I grab my head torch and slowly, slowly unzip the tent. Nothing. No sounds at all. This guy must be right next to the tent now and ready to pounce. The girls that I'm with are heavy sleepers, so they won't even hear the struggle. I turn on my light, and I'm surrounded by dozens of eyes littered around the camp. Eyes eating our marshmallows. Possums. Huge, brush tail possums having a turf war in the middle of our tents. The three girls that I was with never heard a thing.
I was in Sequoia with three friends a couple of years ago. We had set up camp, made a fire, and were just hanging out as it got dark. It was the first night, and we were only about eight miles from the trailhead. I'm not sure why I did it, but I had my headlamp on and swung the beam through the woods uphill from us. There was a guy just sitting there in the dark with his pack. Alone. No lights. I was a little weirded out, but figured maybe he was just waiting for someone. I ignored it and didn't let my light linger on him or say anything. Thirty minutes later, I checked again and he was still there. At that point, I told my friends, and not knowing if he had seen us hide our bear cans, he sneakily relocated our food without using lights. When we checked again ten minutes later, we couldn't find him. Luckily, we didn't see or hear from him again. But the fact that he was setting above our camp with a good view of everything and no lights to give away his location just gave me a bad feeling. I'm sure it was nothing, but it was definitely a little bit hard to sleep that night. A long time ago, I did a six-day hike through the Shenandoah, Virginia part of the Appalachian Trail, from Front Royal to Big Meadows. Now this was the first time I had ever hiked. Not only was I an amateur, but I was completely naive. My hero at the time was a man who walked from the middle of the Congo Basin out to the Western Ocean in Africa. He hiked it in sandals, so I hiked in sandals so I was very green to everything about the Appalachian Trail. I was along a ridge line walking where the path was really thin and covered by grass about a foot high on both sides. I'm in my own thoughts, and I see this hiker coming the other way. He was about six foot two and lean with thick curly brown hair. I'm a big guy, six foot one and 250 pounds. He saw me coming the other way and stepped off the trail. He said, go ahead, jerk. He said it so oddly with a blank face, like it was a casual thing. I went past him completely weirded out. Needless to say, I was weirded out for a while. So two days later, I came across a designated campsite with a constructed platform lean-to. I was so tired with my feet bandaged and raw. It was still around four, so I was debating whether or not to keep going when two women came into the camp. They were of the good-looking granola variety. They looked happy and tired. They said that they might stay there, so staying at that campsite was looking better. About 20 minutes later, that same weird guy walked into camp and started to unpack. It looks like they knew each other. I was bummed out. I did not want to be in camp with this guy. I started to pack up. The two girls were heating up dinner, their potable stoves firing. As I was leaving, the guy takes out his dish, goes up to one of the women, shakes the dish in her face and says, jerk, make me dinner. That's when I left. I thought it was some kind of weird joke, so I continued hiking until dark and ended up making camp off the trail in the brush. So two days later, I was at another campsite. I got there early, so as a friendly gesture, I made a campfire. Everyone who camped there was friendly. Just before dark, to my surprise, the two girls showed up. I asked if their friend was with them and they asked who. I said the tall guy. They began to explain that they did not know him and they had never seen him before. They just had this feeling of being weirded out. They cooked some food for him and then they left with mace in hand. I felt like I missed my chance to be gallon or something. But mostly, we all had the feeling of being weirded out kind of like we avoided a serial killer or something. I was camping in the White Mountains of New Hampshire with my wife. Late in the night, something ran into the side of our tent, made a noise but no real damage. We went back to sleep. The next morning, outside of the door of the tent were neatly laid a vole, 
three mice and one squirrel, all dead. That was creepy. Someone once told me that cats will sometimes do that in the wild, leave presents for humans, especially if they had once been domesticated. But whatever it was, we packed up and hightailed it out of there. This happened in Utah. Be one of the three adults with three teens. Long hike goes into the night. We didn't make the planned location. We stop for the night around 11 p.m., eat and then go to bed. We wake up at 3 a.m. after a dream of a creature looking down upon us from the hill, then charging at camp. I bolt awake, see the other two adults sitting upright in bed. Did you just have a dream? All three of us had the same dream. We noticed that we were in a round clearing with a mound in the middle soaked moonlight. We wake up the kids, pack, and get the heck out of there. We had hiked in about 10 miles to go trout fishing finished for the day, had supper, and the four of us were in a tent for the night. At about 3 a.m., one of the guys woke us up. There was a snuffling, sniffing, slash something moving around the camp. It finally started sniffing and snuffling and pushing against the tent door. I mean really trying to get in. Nose outline pushed into the fabric. They all thought it was a bear. I was tasked with pointing my pistol at the door while one of the other guys unzipped it a little bit and rolled away so we could see what the creature was. It poked its nose through the tent door. Everyone screamed, shoot it, shoot it. I was safety off. Trigger halfway pulled when I realized that it was a coon dog nose poking through the door. It was just lost and spent the rest of the night in the tent with us and was our best dog buddy for the next several days. My boyfriend, our dog, and I were camping in Beaver, Utah. I'm usually a heavy sleeper, but when it comes to being out in the woods, I'm not. My boyfriend is the opposite. Once the sun was setting, it was getting freezing cold. My dog went into my sleeping bag and cuddled me, making the night so perfect. Until, I think around 2 a.m., I woke up to some sounds. Trying to brush it off and fall asleep, I hear it louder and closer. I start freaking out, and my boyfriend is well asleep. The sounds were like coyotes or wolves, maybe. In my head at the time, I would convince myself that it was a pack of wolves, because I assumed the worst, and at the time, didn't know the difference in what they sound like. They kept on howling and crying, from all sides of the camp, getting closer and closer. Finally, my boyfriend wakes up, and he brushes it off, saying, oh, it's fine, we're safe. Well, I didn't feel safe. At one point, they were so close. They were freaking out my dog, and she started barking. And I didn't know whether that would help or make it worse. So I tried shushing her a bit. They ended up being so close to camp, I could hear them walking around, twigs snapping. I slept terribly. I was trembling. My dog was trembling. And my boyfriend was sleeping peacefully. Still to this day, I don't know if it was coyotes or wolves, but we live. It was a beautiful spot, though. Would love to camp there again. Maybe bring a wildlife cam and something to put me in a deep sleep. A half hour from my house, in the state forest, there are backpacking shelters that you can rent. It's like a single group campsite with a crude cabin with no door, a fire ring, and a single pit toilet outhouse. They're in the middle of nowhere, several miles apart. 
not like a campground at all. Very secluded. There are five sites on a 32 mile trail. About 15 to 20 years ago, my parents' friends were staying out there partying for a few days. We hiked out there for a day trip to visit. I was a kid, maybe 12 or so. I was hiking the trails around the campsite with my dog. I heard a very distinct cry for help. Help me, really loud, plain as day. It was a soft, higher pitched voice, either a woman or an older child. I didn't hesitate. I started running towards the voice with my dog. Bad idea, should have grabbed an adult. My dog was acting weird as we searched for a half hour and came up empty. Nothing, nobody out there. She seemed reluctant to continue further and we turned around. I told my parents and the other adults at camp. They just kind of laughed it off. I was distraught for the rest of the day. Fast forward a couple of decades later to last year. I'm solo backpacking, which I do a lot. I decided to rent that very same spot for myself. It was my halfway destination and place to sleep on a 15 mile round trip. Things were going good. I made camp and fired up the single burner stove. It was dark, almost time for bed. I was enjoying my delicious ramen noodles. This uneasy feeling came over me, a feeling I've never really had before and can't fully describe. My body tensed up. I got cold. My hair stood up on the back of my neck. Right then and there, I suddenly needed to leave. I don't know why, just had to. I didn't have time to properly pack. I started stuffing my gear into my backpack. Then my LED headlamp with relatively fresh or so I thought batteries died. There's absolutely no moon. It's dark. Very dark. I pulled a tiny 50 lumen streamlight style pen light from my pocket and finished packing. I had a large heavy duty contractor garbage bag that I always kept packed away to use for a makeshift rain poncho. I finished stuffing my tent and sleeping bag in the garbage bag. I hustled out of the woods with my poorly organized pack on my back and my garbage bag of belongings over my shoulder. The strange thing about my story was it wasn't quiet in the woods when things got weird. I could hear a pack of coyotes yipping and going nuts in the distance when I was hiking out, but nothing else really. Here I am, a grown man who considers himself proficient outdoorsman, sprinting out of the woods. For what? From what? The dark? As a legal permit holder, I always carry a sidearm when doing long solo trips in the woods or hunting. People say with a good holster, you forget the things on you. Well, I was definitely very aware of the sidearm on my way out. I made it to my car in serious record time. I loaded up and sped off. It took me a while to shake the feeling. On the way back, I did get lost but Google Maps helped me backtrack to the fork in the trail. I completely, 100% forgot about the voice calling for help incident at that very spot a decade or so earlier. Then it hit me once I got home and unpacked in the middle of the night. I remembered that voice, looking for that person screaming for help, me and my dog. I got knots in my stomach. For reasons I can't explain, it all kind of started to make sense to me like there was some sort of correlation. I don't venture into that area anymore unless I'm with other people. Something strange is or was out there, or something really bad happened there in the past. I know that this story isn't that crazy, but most of the real ones aren't. I looked online into missing persons or whatever, and didn't come up with anything significant. There have been a couple of murders, but those predated my experience by 10 plus years. And although they were in the same state land, they were not what I'd consider nearby. Perhaps something was attempting to lure me as a kid. That same thing was enough to tip me off as an adult. Maybe I was just a dumb kid with an active imagination. Maybe as an adult, the stress of life got to me as I was left with my thoughts in the wilderness and I had a panic attack. But honestly, who really knows?
camping at La Wiss Wiss Campground in Washington, there was a nearby party at a different site. No biggie. My friend and I, who are both women, were drinking and smoking weed, minding our own business. We had a trail running next to our site that led to another site tucked back a bit. A family with an infant was staying there. Great people, and they walked through a few times, so any movement going through the night I just assumed it was them. I slept in a hammock roughly six feet off the ground, wrapped in a bunch of blankets. Early morning, I wake up to the sound of leaves crunching while someone slowly approached me and stood over for a few moments. Then they slowly walked away. I had the worst feeling in the pit of my stomach. I quickly unwrapped myself to find a teen slash young adult leaning over my friend in her hammock. He was reaching for something on her when she woke up and started to yell for him to get out of there. He was like, oh, I was just looking at your campsite. Turns out, he was reaching for her knife on her belt. Mind you, we had all of our gear, Bluetooth speakers, weed, beer, and electronics, on the camp table. Bad idea. But this guy didn't care about any of that. Just wanted our knife. It was like 5 a.m., and I wasn't going back to sleep, so we left. As we're driving out of the campground, we see this same kid. He smiles and waves at us. I haven't felt safe while camping since, and will only camp if I have a guy with me. I was 12, camping with my family in New Jersey. I took our dog for a long walk around the campground perimeter, and there was farmland next door. Well, there was old barbed wire under the grass that must have been from the farm. And sure enough, I stepped into it halfway up my calf. I was yelling for help and crying from the pain. I told my dog to go get dad, and off he went. Then, gunshots. I looked and saw the farmer far away running across the field with a rifle, and every few feet he stopped and took a shot at me. I was trapped, couldn't move, couldn't lay down. Then sure enough, my dog arrives with like 15 people. He must have really made it clear. They got me free, but when I looked up, there was no farmer, and no one heard the shots. Not my story, but a close friend's. They were camping as a family, a mom, a dad, and two small girls in Washington State. They hiked up into the mountains for like 10 miles before setting up camp. Everything was great until about a half an hour after dark. They heard someone coming up the trail. No lights, just walking steps. The footsteps stopped outside their tent. My friend's spouse unzipped the tent to see who it was. There was a nearly naked man with wild hair and a huge beard standing outside staring at him. Zip in the stats is the only thing he said to them. My friend starts freaking out. Why is a nearly naked man trying to get them to zip stats? What stats exactly? How does one zip a stat? It was too far to hike back to the car in the dark. So they zipped up the tent and basically stayed awake all night while the man sat near their fire pit. At first light, they repacked and hiked back to their car. The man followed them most of the way. They didn't see him do any drugs, and he had nowhere to keep his stash since they only seen a fancy loincloth. About halfway to the car, he disappeared behind them on the trail. They hoped that they could put the incident in the past and forget about it. And they almost could, until they got to their car and saw that someone had written in car soap or chalk, zip in the stats, on every window of their car. I went car camping with my six-year-old on a private campground last year. I've camped a million times, but this was the first time I had taken her by myself. 
That night, we settled in after a good day on the river. The moon was nearly full, and you could see so clearly. There was no need for a flashlight, and we were in a pretty open clearing. She fell asleep almost immediately, but for some reason, I was extremely on edge and couldn't sleep. I felt like something was watching us, but I chalked it up to being alone with my small child. After a few hours of struggling to calm my nerves, she wakes up needing to use the bathroom. Now, I'm thinking I really do not want to get out of this car, but I put my brave face on and we step out of the SUV. She was totally fine, but as soon as we step into the moonlight, this child screams at the top of her lungs, what is that, while literally crawling up onto my back. The sense of dread hit me, and I'm looking all around not seeing a thing. I'm asking, where? What do you see? I'm not seeing it trying to keep her calm, but she's screaming right there. What is that right there? As if it's directly in front of us and I'm blind. I scoop her up and run to the safety of the bathrooms because I truly believe that she saw something that I couldn't see. My heart is racing and I'm asking what she saw. She keeps saying she doesn't know what it was and can't describe it to me. We do our business and I look out not seeing anything. I pick her up and get us back in the car where she immediately falls back asleep, and I do not get a wink until morning. Needless to say, we did not stay another night, but it was hands down the most scary experience I've had while camping. I don't know what she saw, but I had never seen her react like that to anything in her life. In 2020, my mom, a female in her 60s, and I, a female in my 30s, decided to go on an overnight camping trip together on the Oregon coast. I picked what looked like a pretty campsite from a campsite app, and off we went. When we get there, we realized it was right off the highway, but there were enough trees and a fence up front that you couldn't really see the road, but the gate was just a metal gate that swung into place, no locks. There was a house on either side, but the property was fenced in on both sides. We pitched the tent pretty far back, close to the woods on the back of the property. The closest house was about 100 yards away, and the highway was about 200 yards. But again, it was all mostly fenced in and surrounded by tall firs. It was a lovely sight, and my mom raved about how beautiful and peaceful it was. I will say that I got a feeling of dread as soon as we walked onto the property but we arrived late and I didn't know if we'd be able to get a new spot quickly. My mom could tell that I was nervous, but for some reason I put her enjoyment of the beauty and of the campsite over my feeling of dread. We made a nice campfire and enjoyed some hot chocolate as we watched the fire. I kept an eye out and didn't see or hear anything odd. If I remember correctly, my mom went to bed before I did and stayed up and watched the fire for a long time before going to bed. Finally, I tucked in, very exhausted from staying up. At about 2 a.m., I awoke to twigs snapping and what sounded like someone dragging their fingers on the side of the tent, up to the front. I sat up and grabbed up my phone and the only weapon I had, a large flashlight, and unzipped my sleeping bag in case I needed to fight anyone. There was a full moon that night, and I couldn't tell if it was a person's shadow falling on the tent or if it was a tree branch shadow moving from the wind. It sounded like there were two people outside trying to be quiet. We had brought our boots inside, so there was no indicator of who was in the tent. It felt like they were trying to gauge the tent while I was listening for where they were. I had made sure to make enough noise so that they knew that someone inside was alert, but no more than that. If they know someone is awake, they can't surprise us but they also don't know who is inside and whether or not we have guns. I sat there in the dark until dawn. My mom slept through the whole thing. When we got up and out of the tent, small things had been moved. Our camp chairs had cup holders. One cup that had been in a cup holder was on the ground. A pen that had been in a cup holder was also on the ground. My mom raves about how good her sleep was and how refreshing it was to camp there. 
so I didn't want to burst her bubble or scare her. We packed up and I didn't tell her, but I let her have a nice memory of deep rest and relaxation while camping on this beautiful property. Was it someone living in the woods? Someone walking down the highway in the middle of the night? Creepy neighbors? Who knows? My mom got a great experience, and I got a refund and a fear of camping. The property owner said that they might set up cameras to keep an eye on things in the future. People scare me more than anything else that could be out there. Anyway, listen to your gut. We should have found another campsite. Or at least, a hotel. So I've been sitting on this experience a while. I guess just not wanting to make a big deal out of nothing. But after reading some of the stories here and on other related subs... I would really like an answer to what I experienced. Back in about March of this year, I went camping with a friend, my boyfriend and three dogs. My friend slept in his tent with his dog, and I slept in my tent with my two dogs and my boyfriend. My friend's tent was about 30 feet away from ours, and we were camping in the North Georgia mountains off an old forest service road. We were right next to a creek. For context, I'm an experienced backpacker and I'm familiar with the usual nighttime sounds like rustling in the leaves, sticks breaking, cicadas, etc. I have a lot of experience camping by myself, so it's rare that I get spooked out by anything other than humans nearby, as I'm aware of the dangers of traveling solo as a woman. However, this particular night, I wake up in the middle of the night with a sense of absolute dread that I've never had before. I check my phone, and it's about 3.30 to 4 a.m. I really had to use the bathroom, and was debating on whether I wanted to try to put on my hiking boots and venture outside, or just try and hold it until daylight. I didn't want to wake up the dogs, because if they heard me putting on my boots, they'd likely want to go outside to go to the bathroom as well. I'm still in the tent. That's when I notice it. It's almost like a hum but not in the pleasant way where it's a tune or anything like that. It's a low-pitched hum that was reverberating throughout the campsite and forest and through my body. It had two tones. It started with a relatively higher pitch and would switch to the relatively lower pitch after a period of time. Then it would start over without a break in the sound at all. It wasn't soft either. It felt like it was covering the entire wooded area that we were in. It didn't sound like an animal, a person, a machine, or anything that I've ever heard before. At this point, I absolutely couldn't hold off on the bathroom trip any longer. I quickly put on my hiking boots and quietly tell the dogs to stay put. My boyfriend is still sleeping. I unzip the tent and go outside, and the entire campsite was covered in this spooky fog. But it felt like it was my vision that was foggy not the actual air. I couldn't see a thing. The two-tone humming then got louder. I'd do my business maybe five feet from the tent. Sorry, but there was no way that I was venturing any further than that. And quickly nope the heck back into my tent and bury myself into my sleeping bag with a sweatshirt over my head to try and drown out slash ignore the humming. The dogs raised their heads and growled a few times throughout this experience but that isn't unusual for them when camping. I never saw any figures or lights in the woods, but I was also not looking for them and was trying to ignore the entire experience. Does anyone know what this humming could have been? My brother is two years older than me, and we've probably spent 10,000 hours and then some in the woods together. Whether it was building forts slash BMX tracks to LARPing and hunting, we've traveled across the U.S. exploring caves, canyons, cliff diving, mountain biking, camping, hunting whitetail mule deer, 
wild boar, etc. since 2016 when we get the time off. I feel like adding this is important because there's genuinely nothing I wouldn't do or fear when I have him by my side. But this time was different and we both felt it. We've had our fair share of adventures and stories to tell of all sorts. But this one has felt like a lingering stain on my memory. We were both in our mid-twenties, and it was 2019, and this was probably my fifth time hunting the area, and the first I brought my brother along. It's a large forest area of public land that has a few county roads, which are basically two tracks that stretch miles throughout the area. We make the trip up in my truck with our tents, three in total, one for each of us, and another to change in and keep our gear in. Without making this long-winded, we set up camp a couple of miles from the truck, which we drove for quite a few miles through the trails, basically the middle of nowhere. The nearest main road is probably 8 to 10 miles away. We arrived late in the night, set up camp, and quickly fell asleep after a long trip. We then spent the next day scouting slash tracking, then made back to camp for the night. We cooked and then ate had some beers, and we just messed around. The night was still early, but we had a long day and decided to head off for the night. Everything up until this point was normal. I was suddenly awoken to something smacking my tent and hearing my brother's voice call my name. I knew something was off. I called back to him, and he immediately unzipped my tent and made his way inside. I could tell that he was disturbed when I went to ask him what was wrong and he immediately grabbed my shoulder and told me to shush. The sun wasn't up yet, so I think it was around 4.30 to 5-ish a.m. We sat in my tent, and what we heard still confuses me to this day. I can only explain it as whale sounds, different tones of extremely loud noise that I could feel throughout my body. It would come and go, but there would only be a few seconds of silence in between the sounds. It would vary from high-pitched wheels and everything in between to very low sounds that had literal ground-shaking reverb. I regrettably didn't think to grab my phone or record anything, because what I was hearing didn't seem real, and in the moment, I was awestruck. The sound went on until daylight started to break. I believe it was about an hour, but I'm not really sure. Neither of us spoke, and at the time, it felt like I could feel the energy around me, almost like my body was covered in white noise, if that makes any sense. It wasn't even minutes after the sound stopped. It started to rain, and one of the craziest thunderstorms while I was camping happened. The forecast didn't predict or account for any rain the days that we were going to be there prior to making the trip. All the stakes for the tent and our gear was in completely ripped out of the ground, and both of our tents had multiple stakes ripped out as well. Those things we drove into the ground with an axe, and would take some insane force to unearth even a single one. My brother dismisses it, and won't even talk to me about it, saying it was just machinery being dragged. But at the time, we both shared the same feeling of fear and dread. It just seems odd. It was still the middle of the night, and we were so far removed from any nearby communities or industry to hear and experience this occurrence. This was about five years ago. Me, my mom, and my dad were camping at Mary Jane Thurston State Park, just outside of Grand Rapids, Ohio. It was around the end of August, slash the beginning of September. Our campsite was in the front part of the campgrounds. Leading up to the two separate incidents, we occasionally heard what we thought could have been a bird, or some kind of screaming or screeching up in the trees. Or at least it sounded like it was coming from the top of the trees. We'd hear it almost every night, but in a different location. We'd hear it in the trees behind us one night. Then the next night, it would come from the other end of the campgrounds. Then the night after, we'd hear it from across the road. I've listened to the sounds of different animals, including owls, to see if that was the noise we heard. 
but nothing is even close. Occasionally, we'd hear what sounded like branches being snapped, but thought nothing of it. I had my own tent, and that detail is somewhat important as it factors into the second incident. The first incident. My dad woke up in the middle of the night to what sounded like someone was rummaging through the ice chest, which was setting between our tents. He said he then heard whoever or whatever it was shut the cooler and walk away. He told my mom about it the next day. The odd thing was that nothing was missing from the cooler. The second incident happened right after the first one. I had a small little TV in my game console in my tent. I was watching a movie when I hear something approaching our campsite. Whatever it is went through the cooler again. I could hear the ice moving around as it was rummaging through the cooler. I was as still and as quiet as possible, but whoever, or I should say whatever it was, knew I was awake because I decided to put its massive hand on the side of my tent and push it in. I was frozen with fear and didn't know what to do. It felt like forever, but was only about 20 seconds before it took its hand from my tent and walked away. I didn't even think about looking for tracks the next day. We don't have bears in this part of Ohio, so I definitely know that it wasn't a bear. This thing didn't take anything from the ice chest, despite going through it twice. I know when it put its hand on my tent and pushed it in a little, I was frozen with fear. We know it wasn't some homeless person or anyone else, because there was maybe five campsites that had anyone, and they were in the back part of the campground. In May of 2009, I had just broken up with my girlfriend of almost three years. We had moved from Calgary to Toronto, and we were still stuck living together after the breakup, as we didn't know many people in the city yet. Needless to say, the situation was pretty stressful and upsetting. So when a buddy I was going to school with at the time suggested a weekend camping slash fishing trip, I jumped at the chance. He grew up in an area about an hour outside of Toronto, called Flamborough. It's really beautiful. Loads of lush forests, farmer's fields, and small rivers and creeks. We decided to camp and fish along a creek called Grindstone Creek. It's close to some wetlands and the fishing is supposed to be great. We ended up setting up our camp in what was probably a farmer's field. I'm guessing it was trespassing on our part, bordered by a gorgeous forest. We spent the evening fishing, shooting the crap, and drinking some quality craft beers. As it got darker, we made a little fire and roasted potatoes and hot dogs. All in all, it was a really good night. We turned in just after midnight. We shared a tent. My buddy fell asleep before me, and I stayed up playing on my phone until probably 1.30. I must have drifted off because the next thing I remember was being woken up by a high-pitched yipping type noise. I was kind of groggy and it took me a moment to fully wake up. The yipping was incessant and it sounded like a weird coyote. I laid there for a moment listening and then started playing on my phone again. The noise was annoying. I tried ignoring it, but it sounded like it was getting closer. Finally, it sounded like it had to be no more than 10 feet from the tent. At this point, I was getting a little unsettled. I had seen coyotes in Calgary before, and I thought of them as pretty harmless. They never looked much bigger than a smallish dog. But what if this one was rabbit or something? What if it could smell our food? I have a pretty bad anxiety disorder, so I'm prone to worrying about these types of things. I nudged my buddy to see if he was awake, and he was. The noise woke him up too. We discussed what to do about the coyote, as we hadn't brought anything to scare off critters. Not a BB gun, nothing. Finally, he decided he would shine the flashlight on it and holler a lot, hopefully scaring him off. He unzipped the tent, and I watched him pointing the flashlight out into the darkness. I'll never forget what happened next. His legs suddenly went all wobbly, and he sort of stumbled backwards into the tent. 
He had a really dumbfounded look on his face when he looked at me and babbled. It's not a coyote dude. It's a dude. Some weird dude. Normally, I would have thought he was messing with me. I'm a huge wimp and scare easily. I won't even watch horror movies. But I've never seen someone look that scared. And I never want to see that expression on someone's face again. So I knew that he wasn't pulling my leg. The weird yipping and howling noises were still going on. And in retrospect, it really didn't sound like a coyote. But I guess in our groggy states, it was a way for our brains to make sense of it. Anyways, he kept telling me to just look out the tent flap to make sure that he's not crazy. At this point, I was having a full-blown anxiety attack. My heart was racing. I felt like crap but I had to look. So I slowly peeked out the flap and waited for my eyes to adjust. And that's when I saw him. He was standing only a few arms lengths away from the tent. He was swaying a little and wearing a baseball cap. What made it awful though, what was really creepy, was that he was wearing woman's lingerie. That's when I knew that there was most likely something very wrong with this guy. If the making high-pitched noises at a stranger's tent in the middle of the night didn't give it away. After I pulled my head back inside the tent, my buddy and I discussed what to do. Finally, we decided to yell at the guy to leave us alone. My buddy started yelling, Excuse me, can you leave us alone? We're trying to sleep in here. The noise stopped. It was dead silent, and that's when we heard footsteps running towards our tent. They stopped right outside the tent, but we didn't waste any time. We started yelling again. Seriously, leave us alone. We have cell phones in here. If you don't leave us alone, we're going to call the cops. With that, we heard him walk by the tent and head off. Sounded like he was moving towards the road. Needless to say, we laid awake, petrified until the first signs of sunlight. Then we hightailed it the heck out of there. We discussed our experience on the way home, and were both pretty embarrassed about how scared we got. It definitely was not manly on either of our parts. I think because we were both ashamed of how we let some weirdo freak us out so much, we haven't ever talked about it since that day. So there you go. There's my weird story. I'll always wonder what the heck that guy was doing out there, or what was wrong with him. Sometimes, I wonder if things could have turned out differently if we were a couple of girls. I'm not saying that he was some serial killer, but it seemed like he was testing who was in the tent. I guess I'll never know. And for that, I'm kind of glad. I always wanted to try the car life thing after watching so many YouTubers who live in their cars and travel around the country. I lived in Fort Lauderdale for five years and thought I would be stuck there, and that was it. Then the pandemic hit, and when I checked my bank account, I was back paid thousands of dollars. Before I know it, I'm packing up all of my stuff, and the landlord said that I could leave all my furniture and that was fine. Now I'm on 95 heading north, laughing and actually leaving and couldn't believe it. I managed to get a hang of the whole car life thing and became more comfortable stealth parking in different places and not being detected. I had not done any off-grid stuff yet, but was more comfortable by the time I reached Lake Tahoe. I was hiking and asked some guy with his dog, he was a local, if he knew where I could find a place to sleep in my car because Tahoe seemed tricky. He said that there was a place right up in the mountain called Hope Valley. It sounded good, so off I went. Lake Tahoe is already very high in altitude, so this was a few thousand feet higher than that. It was this past July. As I reached the area, I saw a small parking lot that was an entrance to a wildlife nature preserve. It was closed and empty, so that would do. I'm all settled in with my blanket, and the sun is setting and the temperature plummets. Before I know it, it's pitch black and visibility is zero. I start to hear wolves howling, and at this point, I'm game. This was the experience I wanted. It was a little creepy, but I was fine. 
I was living what I would normally be watching on my YouTube in my apartment. Before the sun went down, I noticed their garbage cans that were overfilled 15 feet behind the car from the entrance to the preserve. I finally drifted off to sleep and was awakened by something at 3 a.m. You couldn't see anything. It was so dark. And then I heard footsteps, heavy ones, right outside my door. And at this point, I'm scared as all heck being a New York City boy. Then something brushes up against the car. I'm scared and don't know what to do. I wait for a couple of minutes. Then I open the door, run around the car as fast as I could and got in the driver's side. I drove down the mountain and slept in a Motel 7 parking lot like a baby. Never made it through my first and only off-grid car camping adventure and I won't forget it. The only other time that trip that something creepy happened was in Mount Shasta. I drove halfway up the mountain, parked on the side of the road and got out and started walking into this trail. I made it about 70 yards in and heard a low growl. I never ran so hard back to my car in my life. The rest of the trip was the best hiking I've ever done in Montana. Thank you so much for listening to all of the stories in this video. I hope you enjoyed them. I also hope that you enjoy the extra rain at the end. Get a good night's sleep everyone, and I'll read to you in the next video. Bye-bye now.